Have a look more carefully at that bag of chips you might be having. On the food label on the side, you'll see the words saturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated. Today's lesson has something to do with that, and it's called the index of hydrogen deficiency. First of all, what does this measure? It gives us an idea of how many hydrogen molecules would be needed to completely saturate a particular molecule. So if I begin with the molecule ethane and I convert it to the molecule ethane, I'm going to require two hydrogens or one hydrogen molecule, hence its IHD would be one. If I start with ethine, a triply bonded substance, to turn it into ethane in the saturated form, I require four hydrogens or two hydrogen molecules, hence its IHD would be two. Here I start with a ring structure, cyclopropane in this case. If I cut it at the place I have indicated, each of those carbons would require a hydrogen, or in total, two hydrogens to saturate the molecule, hence its IHD is also one. So you can see that the greater the number of multiple bonds or rings in a structure, the greater its hydrogen deficiency. And the hydrogen deficiency gives me an index of how unsaturated a compound is. The higher the number, the more unsaturated it is. Let's apply it as now to this molecule, benzene, which we've seen before. If I want to saturate that particular molecule, I'm going to have to break the ring and then essentially saturate the three double bonds that are present. I would predict then it has an IHD of four. If I take a look now at its actual structure, you can see that indeed I had to add four hydrogen molecules or eight hydrogen atoms indicated in red to saturate that particular compound. Let's take a look at some compounds now with oxygen in them and nitrogen in them. This is ethanol. To saturate ethanol, I don't need to add anything. It's already saturated, so its IHD is zero. Ethanol, on the other hand, I have to break that double bond, adding a hydrogen both to the oxygen and to the carbon, and hence its IHD would be one. Ethanoic acid or acetic acid, again, I would have to break the doubly bonded oxygen and add hydrogens to both the oxygen and the carbon, and its IHD would also be one. Just a little note here that all three of these compounds have essentially six hydrogens in them. That's because ethane has six hydrogens. The presence of oxygens doesn't alter the number of hydrogens. If I add nitrogen to a molecule, such as the one down below, I have a triple bond that I need to break here. That's going to require four hydrogens to saturate that molecule, and hence its IHD is two. Just a note here that the presence of nitrogen has essentially added one hydrogen to our molecule. What I mean by that is if you look at ethane, the corresponding saturated hydrocarbon, it has six. This compound has seven. This will be pointed out when we use a formula a bit later on to predict the IHD from a chemical formula. Again, let's take a look at this molecule and make a prediction. If we take a look, we have to break a ring. We have to saturate a double bond and saturate a triple bond. Hence, I would predict for this particular molecule an IHD of four. And you can see here a picture of the molecule once it's saturated. Now we can also predict the IHD from a mathematical formula where we take into account the number of carbons, hydrogens, nitrogens, oxygens, and halogens that we might have. One thing you'll notice present in the formula is you don't see oxygens present. You might recall from the previous slide that the presence of oxygen in the saturated compound didn't alter my number of hydrogens. However, the presence of nitrogen did alter the number of hydrogens by one. So let's apply this mathematical formula now to the chemical formula of the substance up above. So you can see that doubling the number of carbons takes me to 14. Add two to that because of it's in the formula. I have to subtract the number of hydrogens, which is nine. There are no halogens, and I add one because of the nitrogen. And I get an IHD of four, and the two match. So to summarize, we need to be familiar with both methods of calculating the IHD. One would be from its structure, and again, looking at this one, I have to break a ring. I have to break three double bonds. I would predict an IHD of four in this compound. And from its chemical formula, C5H3NO2Cl2. And substituting that into the mathematical formula, I also get an IHD of four. So I hope you found that useful. 
Again, comments and questions are always welcome. Thanks for watching.